Staten Island. He has a farm where he's in his 20s or so, still not married. He's got this neighbor, George Vanderbilt, who's doing very well. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt. Oh, Vanderbilt, he Mc Vanderbilt. Uh -huh. And Vanderbilt is like, man, you're really, like, he's like the mega rich. And then he's like, I got a nice condo, basically. <laughs> and so Fred's Fred helps him landscape his place. And Vanderbilt's like, damn, you're good. I'm going to think about this later and hire you for uh, in Asheville for the Biltmore. But that's in a few decades. Okay. And so <laughs> he, we hit the 1850s <clears throat> when the dude is in his 30s by now. Okay. Still not married. Can you imagine? Nightmare. Just couldn't find the right girl. Couldn't maybe. find the right girl. He's like, ugh. And he starts working for, he was a very good writer, and mm -hmm. he starts working for uh, the New York Daily Times, which later <coughs> just became the New York Times. Okay. And he gets sent on assignment down south. So he's on his like third career by this point. Right, right. He gets sent on assignment down south undercover as a reporter to go to plantations and to interview slave owners and slaves themselves. Very dangerous work. Wow. And he is filing dispatches on the road from this experience before he goes he's like on the fence about slavery he's yeah, like yeah. you know what i think it's bad but he'd never seen it up close so it was a theoretical bad yeah and he's like i think it's bad yeah. but you know how are we gonna fuck up the entire economy it's really South? gonna screw up the economy right and like free these states rights and shit and after he goes on that trip he's like fuck no and he becomes this incredibly active abolitionist really and he writes his his articles are eventually compiled uh, into a book called The Cotton Kingdom, which is released in the UK right as uh, the Civil War breaks out. And it is fundamental in turning British public opinion against American oh. slavery and leading people to contribute from the UK to um, abolitionist societies. Right, right. Because they were kind of like, we could go either. I mean, they had abolished slavery a while ago. So they were right. like, eh. And then they were like, oh, wait, no, this is very terrible. Right. So that really, and, and that time also informed his beliefs about designing parks, about the idea that people of all races, all backgrounds, all genders, all creeds, all colors, et cetera, et cetera, should be able to gather for free in these spaces.